morning everyone um so today i'm just going to talk a little about um uh boosting your dog's milk supply um our girl here had a c-section about two and a half weeks ago um so her milk supply isn't the greatest um that kind of affected it and really uh dwindled it um but she seems to be producing just enough sorry just enough for her four pups that she had. Um, if she would have had all 11, uh, I think we would have been bottle feeding a lot. But yeah, we just try and do um, a couple things to make sure her milk supply keeps up um, and that it doesn't dwindle anymore um, to make sure that our pups are getting the nutrition that they need. All right, so the first and most important thing for your dog's milk supply um, is lots of water. So you definitely want to make sure that they always have a full dish of water. Um, I know right after her birth, she just slurped up water like it was nothing. Um, and she still drinks a decent amount of water. So yeah, you want to make sure they're drinking lots of water. Keep their dish full. Don't let, don't let that empty up. Um, second most important thing would be feeding them a high protein dog food. Um, so a lot of people say you should feed them a puppy food. Uh, the, the food that we feed her and our other dog is uh, Victor High Pro Plus, which is a puppy and a dog food. And it doesn't have a lot of fillers, um, it's high in protein. So we just stuck with that. Um, and you wanna make sure they're getting enough food. So, I mean, my dog here, it's a German short hair pointer. She was never a huge eater. You know, like she doesn't, she, she won't keep eating till she's gonna blow up like her other dog. Um, she just eats till she's content. So I've just been free feeding her, making sure she has food in her dish at all times so she can eat as she pleases. Um, so yeah, I'd say those are the two, two most important things. Lots of water, lots of high protein food. Um, they say you can feed them, you know, pumpkin and uh, different other things, sweet potatoes, stuff like that that's high in protein as well if you want. Uh, they also say that you can feed them chicken noodle soup broth. Um, I guess with the salt content, it makes them thirsty if, you know, if they're not drinking their water like they should. Uh, you can give them some of that and maybe that'll help them want to want to drink some of their water. Um, another thing I know uh, that was super important for our girl at least, just because she is very active, even like half a day after her surgery, she just wanted to go outside and chase birds around um, and play with her sister. But yeah, one important thing is to give them a break from their puppies. Um, I mean, in the beginning, we did have to lock her in here for two weeks and just let her go outside to pee and she was going nuts. Um, she also wasn't feeding her puppies on her own. We had to be up every two hours of the night to lay her down and make her feed her pups. Um, but now that she's got the clear to go out and play, um, she's actually been doing a lot better. The last two days, she's been feeding her puppies on her own. Um, the only thing I've had to do is just make sure all the pups are getting to a teat, uh, make sure they're all getting their turn. Um, so yeah, you want to make sure that you're not just making them stay with their puppies 24 hours out of the day. They do need time to themselves. You know, just like a human, we need, we need breaks from our babes every now and then. Um, they need breaks from theirs. So yeah, letting her outside, letting her have her, her time uh, helps reduce stress, um, which helps, you know, her milk supply. If she's stressed out a lot, stressed out by her puppies, stressed out from just being inside all the time, um, that's really hard on their milk, so let them go outside, let them get away, let them calm down, get their stress out, have a break, have their, their time to themselves for a little bit, um, and then bring them back in here. Alright, another thing that is important is to make sure they have a comfortable, comfortable area to feed. Um, so, a lot of times, since it's summertime and it's hot, um, in the beginning, I had the heat lamp on um, just to make sure it stayed 90 degrees in there for their, their first couple days there that they needed that, that 90 degree, 85 to 90 degree heat. She just wasn't a fan of going in there really and feeding them under the heat lamp. So what I would do, I would either unplug the heat lamp while she's in there feeding 
or even bring the pups out here to her where she's comfortable on her bed if I had to. Um, you kind of just got to do whatever works. Um, but yeah, even sometimes still, I'll, I'll let her feed out here if she's just not in the mood going in there. Just because, I don't know, she just seems to get super panty in there. I don't know if it stresses her out or if she's just too warm in there. Um, so it seems like if, if I let her feed out here, that does help a little bit. But like I said, the last couple nights have been cooler. It hasn't been as humid. And she's been in there, she's been in there the last two days feeding them all by herself. She's been doing great. So hopefully that keeps up. Uh, another important thing is to make sure you are alternating teats. Um, don't always let them suck on the same nipples. Uh, you want to make sure they're getting all the nipples. Um, I know she has, I think, two, actually maybe four of them. They're super small. Um, and since she only has four puppies, I kind of just let those go. But Sorry, my uh, washer was being super obnoxious. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I kind of just let the little ones go. The puppies never seemed interested in them. They were too small to even latch on to. So I let those go. But all the other ones, there's like 10 other ones. Uh, you make sure that you rotate them all. Make sure they're all getting sucked on on each feeding. Um, you know, if you have to layer on different sides so they can get to them easier, whatever. Um, but yeah, make sure they're getting all the nipples, make sure they're sucking on them every time so that they keep up and they don't dwindle away. Alright, another thing that I've been doing that the vet actually told me I could do that would possibly help is I have formula here for my puppies just in case I need it. Um, we did try and give it to them here and there, but they didn't act interested, you know, their bellies were full, so Ooh. we took that as, you know, they're content, they don't need any more. Um, but here, I'll yeah, show so you. So I just bought this kind. Um, I mean, it wasn't the most expensive stuff. You can use, you know, like a milk replacer, or you can also just use goat milk. Um, I, w I wouldn't recommend using, uh, human milk, or cow, sorry, human milk. <laughs> uh, cow's milk, um, they say that's not too good, but goat's milk or a milk replacer that is for puppies will do just fine. Um, so what I do with this... I usually, you know, once a day, every other day, just for the hang of it, just to, you know, make sure everything's going good. Um, I just fill her dish up with a little bit of water, um, dump a scoop in, and then fill, fill her dish to the top. And, um, yeah, just kind of mix it around, and she slurps that up like it's a treat. So not only does it get her to drink lots of water, it also, um... Is supposed to help with their milk supply um, but yeah pretty much when I called the vet for some ideas she told me you know there's not just one way that is gonna fix it all um, there's things you can try that can hopefully you know help a little bit but if it doesn't work you're just gonna have to go to the bottle and you're not gonna have a choice but these are just things that you can try um, and I don't know if they're working or not for me <laughs> I mean, like I said, she's keeping up with her four, so whether this stuff's helping or not, I'm not sure, but it hasn't dwindled, so it's not hurting it. Um, so yeah, these are all things you can try. Um, I have one other thing here I want to show you quick. Um, I bought these 4-in-1 vitamins, um, just as like a supplement that I give her. I usually only do it once a day. Uh, just because I don't want to give her too many of them. I mean, I want her to eat her food and I don't want to just uh, give her too many of these. But, so on here it says 31 to 50 pounds, which she's just about 50 pounds. Uh, you're supposed to give them four of them with each meal, which would be eight a day. Um, I'm just doing four a day. Uh, she eats these up like their treat. But yeah, they got lots of good uh, vitamins and minerals in. Um, so you can make sure that they're getting all their, their, um, vitamins and their nutrients. So yeah, now that I got her back in here, I'm going to try and show you, show you her teats here. I mean, as you can see, some of these, some of these are filled in decent. And then there's ones like these that there's really not, not much milk in at all. Um, these back ones are a little bit, and then... These back ones are probably your fullest ones. So, between these two front ones and these two back ones, those are probably the fullest. Uh, the ones in between just just don't do that great. 
But like I said, I alternate all of those between the puppies, make sure that they're all sucking on all of them. Um, and it seems, seems to fill them up decently well. I just changed their puppy pad and they already peed all over it and left little turd, turd prizes for me. So I apologize about that. I have to clean that up, but um, as you can see, they're, they're growing. Um, what you would really want to do, especially in the first two weeks is I've been, I was weighing them every day. They're two weeks now, so I'm not weighing them every day. I'm just weighing them, you know, maybe twice a week to make sure they're gaining their weight. Um, but pretty much within the first week, they doubled their birth weight. And then within the second week, they doubled their weight from the week before. So to me, that was a good sign that, um, that they're getting the nutrition that they need. So yeah, you can see their ticking is coming in super good too. This guy here, he is Forrest. Got a lot of ticking going on. This guy's ticking is just starting to come in. Storm, he's sold. Uh, and then we have Willow there with the purple collar. Hers is coming in a little bit. Um, hers won't be as heavy as a ticking, I don't think. And then we got... Um, purple is Willow. And I don't remember if I said that name right or not. Yes, purple is Willow. Uh, pink is River. And her ticking in is coming in like a champ. Um, I think she's going to be more maroon. So, yeah, that's my little video on how to help keep up your dog's milk supply. Um, like I said, there isn't just one thing that's going to do the trick. There's a couple little things you can do to help out and hope it works. Um, but if not, you're just going to have to do the bottle, which, yeah, I'm glad we didn't have to do that. Um, within the next week or so, we're going to be starting to give them mush. So, yeah. Thanks for tuning in and watching our video about our mama's milk supply. And subscribe to our page to get some more updates and some more, some more tips along the way. She wants to go back outside again. I don't know what's out there. I know there's a bunch of trucks working at the neighbor's house. Maybe that's why they're checking them out. So, we'll let her out since it's not feeding time yet. So, thanks for watching. Drop us a like, drop us a comment. We appreciate it. Have a good one.